Hello everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls and welcome to Batch Filming. It's a magical time where I wear the same outfit in many videos for efficiency. Now I did take down my happy Halloween thing because I think it'll be after Halloween. I added these flowers. That's a real pumpkin. Let's get into it. So for this time, there is a build up. We are building up to this 1111 portal. Check out the description box. I will be going live to talk about that. If you want a personal reading, get in line now. Angelsouls444.com. I am one person. There's no guarantee that I will be able to get your reading to you super fast. Usually, I have a wait time of three weeks. I do my best to get them to you faster than that. But again, it just depends on how many people are in line ahead of you. Okay? So there is that... This is, you know, a couple of different things going on. First of all, we're in this big breaking open time. If you didn't see the last um, last week's weekly and dailies, go watch those because that is a whole build up to what we're dealing with now. So there are hard truths in our face. And the reason why I say there's kind of layers to this because there's this, um, you know, there's a collective thing happening. There's sort of the world energy and if you want to call it like a universal energy and how our little part in the universe is being expressed right now. And then there's the individual. Okay. So it's going to vary by person. That's why a personal reading is usually what you got to do, right? <laughs> if you want that information. But um, there is so, there's so much breaking open and waking us up. Yeah, I'm here and opening our eyes. And this isn't a time where we get to be more divided by going, I knew I was right about that. I knew something was, this whole gotcha energy is ridiculous. Okay. And that's not serving us. It's more of a, they're saying like a quiet revelation. Uh, I used examples in the previous videos about having an epiphany about maybe a past love. You know, or maybe you have an epiphany about your childhood or you look around your workplace and you realize, why am I doing this? Why am I, <laughs> why am I putting up with this? Um, that sort of thing. Now, that is going to have us, because I'm, I'm getting the feeling like uh, there's like a societal quaking <laughs> going on. And part of that, one layer of that would be in response to people waking up and speaking out. We're seeing that already, okay? And we're about to just see how crazy human beings can be and how, um, like, I, I think I've used this example in other videos, but I'll bring it up here as well. I cannot tell you how many times I've been around a man, maybe it's a stranger at a store, and they speak up and say, I don't like this, that, and the other. And I go, oh, well, you know, that I think that's like that because of this, this, and this. And because I just disagreed with what, or gave more information, not even disagreed, they puff up their chest and they get this look on their face like, like, I could hit you right now. I could hurt you right now. Pay attention. Pay attention. That stuff has been going on for forever. And that's just one example of us waking up and realizing, okay, why do I have to feel like I can't speak up? And you know where I'm going with this. Look at the world. Look at the world. Can't speak up. Because why? Why have we not been able to come out and talk about our sexual harassment cases? Or talk about the abuse that you suffered in a workplace? It's a very dangerous situation, isn't it? Let me lay that down for you and listen to me carefully when I say there's something that's going on around that where the old way tries it and they lose. Now, what this looks like, you know, we're on these platforms. we got to be careful of what we're saying. But I will say people are just not taking it anymore. Now, I will tell you to be safe. Do not do anything crazy. Um, this might be the time where we see a lot of stuff getting overturned. And that could be in a lot of different areas. Okay? A lot of different areas. Um, you know, giant property owners 
I, my apartment building is owned by one of those. During the pandemic, uh, they, they raised our rent by an insane amount to price gouge and take advantage of a hard time. Um, you know, we see employers that are like, well, we'll give you this job, but you're going to have to jump through all these hoops. People aren't doing that anymore. Uh, we've talked about banks who give credit cards and they have been, you know, like supercharging on the interest. There could be something where they have to give back. I don't laugh at that. <laughs> honey, 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 honey. Let me tell you when I say it's time for some energy evening, that's what's happening. And so I'm not saying it's going to happen this week, but um, there could there could be some clamoring about this. Or you discover there's this whole thing about um, companies and the people behind the companies, uh, their history, what you know what I'm saying, like what they've been affiliated with, and um, you know just really bad behavior is going to come on out. Now, does that mean that people can't heal, or I don't know? I'm always suspicious of that because, again, we, we have too many, like, personality disorders out. Um, and I should have looked this up before. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to say this. But um, there was a study. I can't find I, I don't. I can't find it in my brain right now. I couldn't tell you where it was. So double check me on this. But I think it was a study where it said uh, 40, 48 or 49% of the population in the United States have either no empathy or broken empathy. That's, I have no words. <laughs> I have no words. And then think about it. The other 51, 52% of the population here in the United States that does have empathy, many of them are going to be enablers. So their empathy isn't even directed in a way that could be helpful. What does this have to do with this week's message? You better figure out what side you're on. And if you're in that 48, 49%, you think there's nothing wrong with you? Figure it out. Because this isn't even about the psychological community coming forward and saying narcissism can't be cured. Um, psychopathy can't be cured or whatever. whatever you know, Double check me on that. But um, this is energy. This is universal energy. This is um, soul contract kinds of things. So... For a lot of you out there, if you have that kind of week where it's just like you just want to crumple up in the corner and cry, it kind of breaks your heart, doesn't it? Get more information. What have you done? How have you lived? If you have lived constantly gaslighting people, shoving other people out of the way so that you could be first, and now you're crumpled up in the corner crying... Let me know when you're done. No. I'm not bringing you anything. I'm not going to feel sorry for you. Sound rough? You're probably one of the 48%. Because the other people get it. And as a matter of fact, you might be giddy if you're in the 51%. Because you might be like, finally. You know, finally it's it's working out here. It's karma. It's It's an evening of karma. And so, individuals may have a hard time. Some might have a hard time. Uh, the others are going to start regaining their strength by waking up to things that we have been trained to overlook. Diminish it. Pretend like it's not there. You know, all those kinds of things. Right? Then there is, like we kind of touched on already, like you know, there could be, I don't know if we're going to see anything outward about like credit cards. I don't think... But just, just hang tight, okay? <laughs> but we're going to start, it's the downfall of heroes. Let me put it that way. I lived in New York City and I lived in Los Angeles for a good chunk of my adult life. I have been around a lot of people that, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'll hear on social media, someone will mention their name and be like, oh my gosh, they had the best words of wisdom, I'm like, you have no idea what kind of person they are. If you only knew 
what I saw firsthand. If you only knew, they would still worship them. Because that's how we've been trained. Again, well, they did all these bad things, but look at them, they're successful, so they must know how to do life right. Give that some thought. So there's that. So there's a downfall of heroes. Um, th there's a whole, there, there could be a lot of egos breaking and then we're in danger because egos are breaking. Um, there could be lies. Could be, please. There are lies <laughs> everywhere and um, those are going to be coming to light there are going to be so many big energetic. Oh my gosh, I, what, what, what word do I even use? Um, I want to use the word whiplash. Okay, yeah, it's sort of like what the, huh? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but um, we are very protected. Just know that. And I've been telling people, be prepared. And I just told some people on uh, a live, be prepared. Even if you live in California, be prepared as if there's going to be a hard winter. Now, here that includes um, being prepared to not have running water because our pipes freeze all the time, no matter what we do. Um, or actually, I'm in an apartment complex. I think it's people just not... I know at least one person who didn't <laughs> drip their faucets and open their cabinets and stuff like that. But, you know, making sure you have food on hand, being prepared to be without electricity. That's a big one. Please hear me when I say that. Be prepared to be without electricity um, and be prepared for water. Okay, so that's easy enough. Go and get those, you know, you can go to, if you really want to go to a big box store, whatever's accessible for you, you can get those big um, drink dispenser things, they're glass sterilize them filter your water get those filled up you know have things like that I do that every fall because <laughs> you know again um some people are like you know with with winter around here it's not like it's so horrific it's just I don't know I just kind of like to be prepared because once it's cold I don't go outside and yes I'm from northern Ohio which is almost Canada I know and I lived in New York City I know that's how I know it's terrible <laughs> You know what I mean? So just um, <laughs> what I'm getting at here is that there are going to be some things that really crash in front of us. And disbelief, there could be disbelief. When we're talking about 11-11 energy and it's manifestation time, it's Archangel uh, Metatron, Ascension energy, that doesn't come with like, make a wish, <laughs> blow out a candle, <laughs> like you get some sort of birthday wish. Um, not exactly, not exactly. This could be a time where things come up in front of you that really test how you have run your life and what you have chosen to believe. What sort of conditioning do you still keep with you? Are you one of the ones with no empathy? I could go on and on here. Um, Mid-November, the energy around it is starting to feel a little bit different. It's shifted a little bit than from... If you haven't seen the November overview, watch that. Watch the October overview as well. Mid-November felt like it was going to be absolute turmoil. Yeah, we have things going on here in the United States uh, around that time. But now something shifts. And I think it would be... It's the people. And it's not necessarily an outward action. It's a discovery around what we've accepted. And what that then does is when we wake up to that and we shift, it's the shift. Guys, that's all about manifestation. It's through here. It's through your entire being. It's experiencing your new story, not just thinking about it. Mind over matter is a powerful thing. But imagine when you get all your power online with one another. And we say we're not accepting this anymore. And then... We're playing with universal energy, right? So this is where, you know, some traditions call this karma. When I say there's an evening of karma, it feels like, why did I just get an image of Harry Potter in my head? Oh my gosh, whatever. Um, but like people who think that being evil or being nasty or, you know, just 
being immoral, if I may, uh, that that's the way to get along in life. Like they're trying all their powers and it's just shooting back at them. And we might be in for, it depends on, you know, free will choice, but we might be in for some people really trying it. And when I say trying it, I'm like, like trying it. What? You really think you were going to get away with that? And then boom, there's this natural backlash. Now, the people that are trying something and then it backlashes on them, they're going to fall down and they're going to cry victim. Okay? They're the victim. The victim of the circumstances they created. You might be experiencing this one-on-one -on -one in relationships. We might be seeing this with countries. We're going to be seeing this with a lot of stuff. Okay? It gets intense. But <laughs> it's that time, guys. It's that time. That's why I keep saying, you know, every, it's not just like a one and done kind of thing. Always be on the lookout for um, how you can heal. What can you discover? You know, what kind of feedback have you gotten that you need to sit with? If people are like, oh my gosh, you're, I don't want to go down this road. Um, I don't think because, you know, people can be like, oh, you're so heartless. But then I just realized like most of my life people have told me I'm heartless because they are narcissists and they were trying to manipulate me and I wouldn't let them. And they're like, oh my God, you know, the smear campaign kind of thing. So, you know, you got to be self-aware. Okay. Hello from heaven. If you go back and watch, I think it was a daily, um, we had a card from the other deck that talks about people on the other side wanting to talk to us. Now I went into this whole thing about how like people that we knew in the physical here and they crossed over, they're not technically your spirit guides. They can watch over you. They can be with you. But um, people get so feisty about that. No, they're my guardian angel. They're not your guardian angel. Guardian angels are different. Okay. <laughs> you can call them your guardian angel. You can refer to them as such. But just what I, the reason why I said that was I don't want people um, shutting out their angels and spirit guides and um, light beings that are trying to help us. Because they think that's their angel. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is Hello from Heaven, Archangel Osriel, who's all about transformation. Your loved ones in heaven are doing fine. Let go of worries and feel their loving blessings. Why do these cards keep coming up? Let me tell you. We know when it is time for a huge shift. When we start shifting, but the energies on the other side are coming in closer. So our loved ones on the other side are coming in to help us, to help us see things, to understand, but also light beings, angels, your spirit guides. People have talked about ancestors. Um, yeah, but be careful with that too. You feel me? All right. So there's that part. I'm telling you, now, now even I as a reader, I'm getting a little like, so there's been talk of like in end times, there will be the raising of the dead, the resurrection of the dead. Um, like, like zombie apocalypse. No, we ain't doing that. <laughs> I will not participate. No. <laughs> okay. But in this sense where the earth is coming up on its testing time, and they're all kind of coming in to kind of watch over us. Yeah. Yeah, that's happening. But my grandma better not show up as no zombie. Because grandma. <laughs> anyway, let's get another card. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Angel therapy. This is us acknowledging what we need to heal. There it is. Archangel. I got it. Okay. Archangel Raphael, give your cares and worries to us angels and allow us to take your burdens. But look at that. It, that's like sacred geometry in that little orb that this angel is holding, but it reminds me of the earth. <sighs> yeah, they're gathering around. Big time gathering around. But they need us to hear because we need to be sort of, we need to be the boots on the ground here. You feel me? On um, last call to wake up, especially if you're one of those people who doesn't have any empathy. Last call to wake up. 
from here you're choosing a different side of history. And it's not just our human history. It is. I gotta... Hold on. <laughs> I'm using my foot to bring that over. Okay, it's not just our human history, but goes out into the universe too. Okay, so it's life review. Archangel Jeremiah, take inventory of your life and resolve. Resolve to change or heal anything that is unbalanced. Last call to fix it. Last call to wake up. If you're cruel, let me give you an example of uh, someone who doesn't actually have empathy. I used this example before, but I'm going to use it again. During the pandemic, you probably know exactly where I'm going with this. Um, during the pandemic, I had seen a lot of people crying out for help who had been in the process most likely of going through isolation because they were trying to heal from toxic relationships. Then this happens and they're alone, having to do everything on their own. So they're already struggling with having to heal from like probably narcissistic abuse or cluster B personality disorder abuse. So they're pulling back to get themselves healthy so they can make, you know, have different attraction points as we would say here in spirituality. And then we have these people who call themselves social butterflies. Hang with me. You want evidence? You want receipts? The receipts will be in the comments, I promise you, from me even just saying this. So people who are used to being around people, I need people, I need people. Now I'm not talking like these are just like extroverted people, you know. These are people who were complaining that they couldn't be around other people. Now, I would say I was one of those people who was still and still am recovering from that kind of abuse. And so I do isolate, you know. But it's necessary for my healing, I do feel. That's just me. But um, when all this happened, I'm losing family members, friends, family friends. And I'm having to mourn on my own. It wasn't safe to go anywhere. So I was, you know, that's where I was. And I knew other people were in that same space. And some people were hanging on by a thread. And then you got these others who are complaining, oh my God, I'm just used to being social. I'm just used to being around people. I just can't. So I got on Facebook on my personal Facebook page and um, I made a comment about that. I'm like, hey, listen, those of you who are complaining that you can't just be social right now or you need people, take a moment and remember those who didn't have a choice but had to remove themselves from people because they're recovering from abuse and now they're going through this on their own and they're leaving cries for help all over the place. And, and you're drowning out their voices just because you're not used to having to do things on your own. You know, some of us have been doing that not by choice. And there was somebody from high school who I barely knew in high school. The type that's always trying to make their life look perfect. Right? Bragging about where the, you know, whatever. Comes out and says, I know you meant well. Okay, right there you're diminishing what I just said. And continue to defend herself about how some people like us, like some people are just, you know, they're introverts and they're good at being on their own. And I'm not. I need people. I need to. And the, I paid attention to how many people, first of all, overlooked what could have potentially been a cry for help from me. You know she's not seeing cries for help from other people. She's only thinking of herself and how she needs to socialize because she needs to feed. She needs to feed. Cluster B types were losing their minds during that time. And I also paid attention to the people who were loving her comment. And oh, poor you and comment. And like, oh, I know how you are. Oh. Why am I telling you this long story? For very good reason. Watch your ass. You think I'm kidding? You think I'm just trying to be sassy or dramatic? I'll check you on the other side of this year. Let's see how you're doing. Last call to fix it. Last call to wake up before there are consequences. Yeah. Now, so if, oh, oh, if you're, oh my God, that went right over a candle. Thank God that wasn't <laughs> on. Um, <laughs> now, if you're one of those people who's sitting there going, yes, and that's only going to be half of my audience. The other half is going to be rip roaring ticked off that I said that. They're gonna, you're going to see them. They expose themselves all the time. Defensive. Defensive, defensive. Did not hear what I just said. 
They always miss it. I'll check you in 2023, honey. Let's see how you're doing then. Of course, those people always lie. My life is great. We know it's not. <laughs> All right, anyway. Prosperity. So if you understand this, the prosperity is taking on a whole new meaning. There's a whole reason why I spent many minutes explaining that or giving that example. Prosperity is going to mean something different now. Now we're not going to look at somebody who pretends, okay, that their life is perfect. And, you know, more often than not, they're hiding something or whatever. You know, like they're trying to make it seem like their relationship is perfect. And we know darn well it's probably not. <laughs> but also with this idea of prosperity, okay, and, and taking a broad look at that. The idea of prosperity changing. It's not just, oh, I've got a lot of money in the bank. It is, I am prosperous because I have one good friend. I am prosperous because I no longer allow toxic people who feel entitled to my time and my attention. I don't let them in anymore. I don't let them mess with me. Even when they're setting up some scenario just to hurt me. I was hearing uh, uh, somebody on it was social media again. Um, but she was saying about how she had introduced people and then they started hanging out and leaving her out of it just to hurt her. And, you know, that is, oh, that, that is so, <laughs> that is the kind of thing that happens out there. But what, what's the, the good news around that? She sees them for what they are. Now she has an opportunity to disconnect herself from that. And this is where you're bringing this prosperity mindset. And that might mean, um, I'll read this here in a second, but that might mean, okay, I know that now. Now I won't let them in. Or, you know what? I don't need to be in a relationship. <laughs> Discovered how to do plenty on my own. Like I, you know, I don't know if I could change my own tire. But I got a phone. I got people I could call. <laughs> I'm, unless I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Let's not go down there. This is a bad example. But anyway, most stuff I can do on my own. All right? Uh, and, and realizing I have so much more to be grateful for. Even if it is the knowledge that someone isn't to be trusted. Or the knowledge and, and waking up to some of these um, falsehoods that people are putting out there. Or spinning these narratives just to make someone, make, they're doing this to make themselves seem like a saint. You know what I'm saying? So let me read this. It's Archangel Ariel. Your material needs are provided for as you follow your intuition and manifest your dreams into reality. So getting the clarity. So you're not playing into the toxic game anymore. You're coming out this way and going, oh, I see it now. Life review. I see it now. I see what my path to prosperity is. Um, I'm going to heal. I'm going to heal from what I've experienced, right? Let me get another card from this other deck that I have sitting here. Okay. And then I need to change my battery. I think it's about to go. <laughs> All right. Like, comment down below if you know what I'm talking about here. Um, and please give us some thought. And I would encourage you to watch the comments anyway because you will see the defense of people. You will see how they try to defend what they think they know about life. Or anything like uh, the, the scapegoat of your family, if you've been through the narcissistic abuse, you've been through all that, you know what a lie all that is. And guess what? It's your time. It's your time because they showed you. These fools trained you to be powerful and they didn't even know it. <laughs> there you go. And no, you don't need to be nice to them. I said it. We're not fake over here. Okay. As a matter of fact, doing that and supporting them is being an enabler and you're part of the problem. Grace and Antoinette, to help heal this situation, see the other person's point of view with compassion. Um, it's funny, I was just saying enabler. This is like a very enabling kind of message it could be, okay? In that whenever someone, because it's usually the biggest whiners, the ones who demand the most attention are the ones that, again, are creating their own situation, then playing victim, and then wanting everybody to come and save them. So... I feel like part of what the energy that we're dealing with here is understanding what this really means. Having compassion for yourself or having compassion for the person who has gone through quite a bit. 
they haven't harmed anybody or, you know, they never intentionally harmed anybody, but they're trying to find their way outside of the brainwashing. They're trying to navigate and trust me, one of the biggest mind Fs that could possibly happen is someone grooming you, getting you trapped up in the trauma bond, confusing you, guilting you, gaslighting you. When people have to disconnect and go off on their own to try to figure out, like, because that's, I can speak from experience, it's a horrifying moment when you realize I've lived a lie. You know, I've wasted, for me, I felt like I had wasted so much time believing people's toxicity and, you know, believing their toxic viewpoints and allowing myself not to express in my fullest capacity because I thought I wasn't worth anything. That's happening a lot. So if you're going through that, let me tell you, it's your time. Again, I just said it, I'll say it again. These fools trained you and didn't even know it and it's gonna be their downfall now i'm I'm making it sound so like game of thrones here like yeah we we shall be victorious like (laughs) it doesn't have to be like that but where if you are somebody who's constantly um playing into the drama of the cluster b person check with an expert i have to say that for legal reasons check with an expert um (laughs) but if you're constantly having to check in on them maybe go check on the quiet person Go check on the person who's never invited. Go check on the person who everybody gossips about. They're the ones in real trouble. They're the ones that when something happens, people go, oh my God, I didn't see it coming. You know, like, and I'm not trying to like, you know, mock people who really didn't know. I'm not trying to say that. But what I'm getting at here is that you know, that, that's how dark things happen. And people go, how, why? Have compassion towards them and start being more discerning about who's just trying to pull on your energy. Okay? We're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care. <laughs>